Good morning. It's 6 a.m. in Singapore, 11 p.m. in London and 5 a.m. in Chiang Rai, where late at night came the extraordinary news that 12 boys and their football coach missing for nine days in a cave had been found alive. Divers have been trying to reach them for days after water levels rose suddenly, trapping the boys. The discovery came after a marathon search operation in Tam Lung Caves. Helped by reducing the water level, rescuers first managed to get from the cave entrance to set up an operation base in an area called Chamber 3. Eventually, divers reached a cavern known as Pattaya Beach, where it was thought the missing had sheltered, but the area was found to be flooded. Divers then went 400 metres further into the cave. It was here the boys were found. Now, rescue teams must decide whether to move them back through the flooded cave using scuba gear or attempt to pump the water out. As Jonathan Head reports from the Tamlong Caves. How many of you? 13? Brilliant. This was the moment they were found. British cave diver John Valanthan calling out to the missing group in a cave deep under the mountains. Monday. 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 Okay, but one week and Monday. You have been here ten days. Ten days. You are very strong. Very strong. As the divers turn to leave, promising to return with backup, one of the boys says to them, please tell them we're hungry. I know, I know, I understand. We, we come. Okay, we come. For the families of the boys, a joyous end to nine agonizing days of waiting, hoping, and at times, despairing. Today is the best day. I've been waiting for my son for so many days. I'm so excited. The first thing I will do is hug him. And for the thousands of volunteers, officials, climbers, and others who've taken part in this extraordinary multinational search operation, a very special moment. Most of all for the local governor, who's been the public face of this rescue and ordered officials working on it to think of the boys as their own sons. Narongsak Osotanakorn described how the boys were discovered and then said simply, we found our younger brothers and they were safe. Well, after the jubilation, now the serious challenge of extracting 12 boys and their coach, weakened by hunger, possibly injured, from caves it had taken experienced divers many days to get through. It will be a prolonged operation. But right now, this entire country is relishing a happy ending that have become harder and harder to believe in. They were all members of a football squad who'd entered the caves after a Saturday practice with their coach. Their bicycles were found chained to the railings at the entrance. It was presumed they'd been cut off by fast rising water. The Thai government has thrown everything at this effort to save their lives. Now pumping thousands of gallons an hour from the caves to help to get them out. More rain later this week will complicate things but this astonishing news of the boys' survival will surely spur everyone on. Jonathan Head, BBC News, Tam Luang Caves, Northern Thailand. Well, let's stay with that incredible rescue in Thailand and get the latest from the scene. We can speak to Panu Wong Cha Um, who is a senior correspondent with Reuters. He is by the caves in Chiang Rai now, where he joins us on the line. Uh, welcome to the programme. Glad to be here. Tell me um, about the day and what you have seen of the last few hours. Well, basically, it's, a, it's been a, a long waiting game for the waiting media and several of the relatives who are waiting for the provincial governor who, who is heading this rescue effort to, to, to come out and, and, and hold a press conference to really tell us uh, how long uh, it will take to bring the boys out from the inside the cave. Now, to get you a sense of idea the difficulty that this task is, uh, the cave is still very much flooded in many areas, and it took uh, elite divers some around about uh, days to get into some of these parts. Uh, the Thai authorities said that they have prepared uh, 
roots uh, with uh, air canister attached to the wall of the cave to sort of allow people to move in and out the cave in an easier fashion. But these boys have been stuck in the cave for uh, over nine days. Uh, so we have to see first what the medical staff, who we believe have already gone in to assess the health of the boy, say about their state of condition. And then we have to see how the rescue effort will, 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 will work in bringing them out of this cave, which is still quite dangerous. Now, a high authority uh, have already said uh, in front of the cave that they will continue uh, day and night to pump water out of the cave. They will continue with some of the operation that they were doing beforehand, before they're discovering uh, these boys. They will continue with all these efforts to ensure that there's a safe environment uh, that would enable uh, a much safer return for the 13 people. Are you getting any sense of when exactly they are hoping to finally go in and retrieve all the people there? Well, there's no clear timeline at this stage, but we are beginning to see uh, for the past few days at least uh, the government holding different kind of medical emergency drills. And after the news of the discovery of the boys, we have been seeing uh, some of these uh, people, ambulances, put on standby. But it is still early days in this operation. Uh, some of the people that I have spoken with uh, involved in this operation said that it would take them uh, uh, at least some time to really adjust the search effort and make it into a, a rescue effort instead of bringing the people out. Uh, again, all this, uh, the, the most important variable is, of course, the health of the 13 people, the boys and their coach, as well as the weather condition. Now, um, the, one of the things that has enabled this rescue so effort to have gone very smoothly over the My past couple of days... My apologies, Panel, we'll have to leave it there. We've run out of time, but we're grateful uh, for your analysis on what is happening and, uh, of course, more developments to come from Thailand as soon as we get them. Now we can go back to our top story on the dramatic rescue of the 12 boys and their school teacher freed from the Thai cave. We can now... Uh, speak to a child psychologist, Rachel Hiller, from the University of Bath, who joins us from there. Now, Rachel, uh, we can't even begin to imagine the ordeal that these 12 boys and their coach have gone through. Nine days trapped in a cave, uh, an incredible uh, amount of suffering, and finally uh, to be found and yet still trapped, so they are not out of danger yet. Do we have a sense of what these boys might be going through psychologically? I mean, there's no doubt that what they're going through would potentially be particularly traumatic for those boys and their coach. And I think it's too early, too early days to make a comment on that group specifically. As well, from the last stories I've heard, they're still in the cave and um, they're still kind of in, going through the process of the, this very frightening and difficult event. But certainly what we know from our work with children exposed to all different kinds of trauma is that some of them will be okay and that can go through very awful things and seem to get through it relatively unscathed mm -hmm. but others uh, might go on to develop psychological difficulties such as uh, what our group looks at mostly which is post-traumatic stress and that's the kind of nightmares or flashbacks perhaps changes in their mood from how they were beforehand um, wanting to avoid things that might remind them of their experiences and in this case we might imagine that might be things like darkness or um, water but really it is I think too early days to um, know how those boys are going to feel. That's right you're saying it, it is early and of course there is that cultural context as well this uh, taking place in uh, Thailand so how should yeah. uh, communities their families perhaps be, be dealing with them uh, once they are free and presumably the media scrutiny that will come with it all? Yeah, so the, and you mentioned kind of cultural nuances at the beginning there, and that is important to point out that a lot of the work we know of in, or a lot of the research done in this area around what parents and communities can do are from countries like the UK or the USA. Um, but certainly from that kind of work, what we know is um, firstly that 
parents themselves can be at risk of developing post-traumatic stress or uh, psychological difficulties after their child's been involved in this. And that's the first thing to point out. It must be incredibly frightening for the parents. Um, and we know from other types of trauma exposures that they are also at risk. So finding their own support networks will be important too. But in, in terms of the young people, what we particularly find is that a common reaction from parents and from children themselves after they've been in very frightening events is that they want to avoid all thoughts of that event. They want to avoid anything that might remind them of it, perhaps any conversations about it. Um, but we know avoidant coping in the longer terms, at least in the groups that we've researched with, actually can be unhelpful and can maintain that sense of distress. So for parents and communities, and that might be teachers, it might be their peer groups as well, giving those young people a chance to talk about and process what they've so help them develop this sense that um, that is in the past mm -hmm. and help them develop that sense of safety in their current life can be really important. Indeed, some, some very good advice there because, of course, that ordeal is not over for those uh, 13 um, in, the, in the cave. Thank you so much for joining us, Rachel Hiller there from University of Bath. No Bar. problem. Thank you. We have breaking news on the operation to rescue a dozen boys and their soccer coach found alive after being trapped for days in a dark, wet cave. Officials in Thailand revealing some astounding details a short while ago. Uh, we're told the boys will be taught to dive to help them get out of the cave and that they'll be supplied with four months of food. Uh, CNN photojournalist Mark Phillips joins us uh, from Thailand. Mark, tell us about this rescue plan. Uh, it sounds like it could drag on for some time. Yeah, the boys could be in this cave for a very long time. At the moment, what the Thai authorities would really like would be for the water to subside so that they could actually carry the boys out. But we're in the middle of the monsoon season and there's heavy rain, you know, in the next couple of days coming up. But yeah, one other option is teaching the boys how to dive, to bring them out that way. But they have to ascertain how their health is, how physically strong they are. They have been in that cave now for 10 days actually, we've moved into the second day, or the following day, and they have to see how fit they are. They're bringing a diver, uh, a team of divers went in late last night with one doctor and one nurse, and so they will have a look at the boys, see how what condition they're in, and see if they're fit to move them from there. Jim? And what are the rescues doing in the short term, Mark, to, to keep these boys safe? In the short term, if the boys stay, um, well, they're, they're organizing, actually, they're really not thinking about if they stay there, they're, they're thinking about how to get them out as quickly as possible. They don't want to be caught in there again if the, if, the, if the caves flood. They don't want to be stuck there figuring out how to get the boys out. It's, the longer they stay there, it is quite dangerous. So the option is to try to get the boys out as quickly as possible, but as safely as possible. And that's what they're trying at the moment. All right, Mark Phillips, uh, thank you very much. Hoping uh, for the best for those kids. We appreciate it. Now back uh, to... Uh